This conference will now be recorded. At this point, Mike, I can hand it over to you. Uh, if you've got any questions for me, just let me know. I'm going to mute everyone else other than Wes. Um, so you're good to start. Okay. First thing I'd like to thank, uh, there's quite a few people that's helped me out with this. They've uh, either answered questions or sent me pictures or uh, let me take pictures of their cars or pieces of their cars, and I really appreciate that. Um, you're probably wondering how much information there can be out here on a windshield washer system. Uh, there was a lot more I found than I really started or anticipated when I started. So hopefully everybody gets a little bit out of this and uh, we'll get started here. Uh, 53, the first style washer units was uh, powered by a foot pump down on the floorboard. Um, I'd like you to uh, kind of notice the lettering on this label here on this one. Uh, there's two or three different labels that I've seen on these. I can't really tell you what is original, what is not original. It's kind of hard to tell on some of these. Uh, the filler cap uh, down in this area here, it changes positions on one of them. And the, uh, the first uh, windshield washer units had this uh, connector valve up here with a uh, inlet in one side and the outlet in the other. Um, it uh, changes through the years here too, so. The system was made by Trico, and you will either see a GM or a Trico uh, label on the top of these cans. The jars were glass with a concave bottom. Uh, right here, you can see a, what's left of a Trico uh, label on this one. Um, the lids were metal. Um, you can kind of see here, uh, the bracket was on the passenger side. The original brackets was very thin. Um, this upper bracket was less than a half inch. It had no reinforcement in it. The very first brackets had a solid piece here instead of the uh, piece added on. This was a second style bracket. I got a picture of a first style here in a little bit. Um, the standoff down here changes through the years also. Um, Here's the foot pump that activates um, the washer system. There, there's a cable that hooks in here. When the pump is pushed, the cable activates the uh, windshield washer or windshield wiper motor. Um, the foot pump was used to around VIN 178 and 53. Uh, then it was changed to a uh, push button. We'll get into that here shortly. Um, the uh, Foot pump, as you can see, was mounted on the floorboard somewhere close to the emergency brake in the 53s. Here's the first style bracket. Uh, you can see that this piece up here was all one. It was not bolted on like the one I showed you a little earlier. Um, the other thing on this, I, I have not seen any information on this uh, label on the bracket. Uh, I just happened to run across this one. I don't know if this was used on Corvettes because I know this particular system was also used on Chevrolet passenger cars. It was used on Cadillacs, Pontiacs, and some Ford products. The windshield washer uh, nozzles themselves was uh, the same from 53 through 62, um, mounted on the cow. Um, this is a, actually a third style lid. You can see over on this right in where my pointer is, there's a plastic takeoff for the hose. The vacuum hose comes in here. This puts the fluid out to the uh, washer nozzles. There is a pump inside that is activated by a uh, push button. And you can see this is the third style bracket, which is wider. It's about an inch wide band up here with a reinforcement in it. And you can see down here that the uh, offset where it fits against the fender is a little different. And this is still mounted on the uh, uh, passenger side of the car. This particular lid, there is a brass piece here. 
rather than that plastic piece. It was used on very few cars from what I can see or what I've uh, researched. It looks like it's around two to 300 cars is all this was used on. And you can see the filler lid was moved to a different uh, angle than was earlier. Uh, fortunately, I was not able to find one of these to get a good picture of. This is the uh, wiper motor. This particular one was used with the foot pump because it has two cables, one coming from the uh, button on the dash and one coming from the foot pump. Uh, either one will activate the washer or the wiper motor. Um, this was run by vacuum. It wasn't electric through 53, 54, and the 55 six-cylinder cars. Uh, in 1954, they listed the washers as an option, but from all the research, um, 54 and 55, all the options basically were mandatory. It really did not become an option until 1956 for the washers. We'll get into that here in a little bit too. This particular wiper motor was after the foot pump was gone. This was just off of the push button or the, or the uh, knob on the dash. Um, the uh, washer pump was activated by vacuum from the uh, knob on the dash, had a separate uh, vacuum uh, valve on it. This is a picture of the wiper motor. It was made by Trico, um, it was used on all 53, 54, and 55 six cylinders. Uh, just another view of it, you kind of see the opening on the uh, mechanism uh, down here that actually rotates the uh, paddle back and forth. Um, the cables come in and hooked into the this up here, which ran a switch that turned it on and off, turned the vacuum on and off to the unit itself. Um, you can see on this uh, particular slide, the, the little paddle that went back and forth that actually ran the wipers. Uh, you can see the different holes. There was a piece that slid over the top that uh, actually put the vacuum to the places where it needed to go. Um, there's a little better close view of the uh, top valving. There's a view of the uh, paddle as it goes back and or where it will go back and forth. How it kind of set in the bowl. This is a uh, 1954. You can see it does have the plastic piece here with the hose going up to the washers. Vacuum come in here and you'll notice this particular label here it's got the rounded piece some of them are straight across um, some of the lettering is a little different angles um, if anybody's got any information on that i'd appreciate it if you could send it to me because i'm not really sure if both styles showed up on these particular units or just you know one of these is a remanufactured one This is the pump that's inside the uh, jars. Um, as you can see, right here is where the fluid goes out. This is the vacuum. I will show you the inside of this pump here in a minute and kind of explain how it works. You can see up in here that there is a little concave in the bottom of the jars. This is the inside of the pump. This spring sets up against here and goes down into this plunger, this uh, piston that goes down into this. When the vacuum is put to this point up here, it sucks this plunger up against the spring, puts tension on the spring. There's a one-way valve in this part down here that sucks the fluid in. Once the fluid gets in, it hits the top, it shuts the vacuum off. The spring pushes the plunger down. With the being a one-way valve here, it pushes it out this particular nozzle here to the windshield washer nozzles.
In 55, the jar lid changed again. You can see here that uh, the little connector up here, both fittings are going the same direction, the vacuum in and the uh, boiler fluid out. And you'll notice the label here is straight across. The lettering is straight across. It's not angled as it was before. Um, and 55, they went back to the foot pump operation. They did away with the uh, pump inside the jar on this one. In 55, they also changed the bracket. Uh, you can see the bottom was a little deeper, sticking out a little bit. And also, this was mounted on the driver's side rather than the passenger side for the V8 cars. Also, with the V8 cars, we went uh, to a, if you had a three-speed or manual transmission, you went to a bag instead of the jar. And you can see on this particular unit here, the valve on the top is one in, in one direction and out the other, as it was in the 53 on top of the uh, jars in 53. Um, the uh, automatic 55 cars use what they uh, call a plunger style pump. Um, you can see that the vacuum come out here to go to the jar and the cable hooked up here to turn the uh, windshield motor, wiper motor on. Here's one mounted in the car, the location of it. The manual transmissions did away with this uh, plunger style pump and went back to the lever style pump. Also in 55 on the V8 12 volt systems, we went to an electric motor for the wipers rather than the vacuum. You can see here with the uh, foot pump and the uh, button on the dash, we've got two activation cables to go to turn this uh, motor on. Here's just a top view of the motor. The part number of this first electric motor was a 5047799. Um, they change here a little bit through the years. Uh, 55, 56, the foot pump. Uh, you can see here where the cable comes in. They had also had a rubber uh, piece where the foot actually activated it, uh, where they didn't in the 55 or 53s. Uh, here's the location of where it's at. Looks to me like you could uh, dim your lights when you uh, washed your windshield pretty easy with this setup. In 1956, we still got the bag, but if you'll check here, both nozzles are in the same direction, unlike the 55, where you had one in one side, one out the other. They went back to this in the same direction as they did the 55 jars. And you can see it's mounted on the driver's side fender with the bracket here with two little hooks that hang the bag over the top. The bag was blue. Uh, had the Chevrolet road across the top and the windshield washer and uh, the Chevrolet emblem at the bottom. This is the pickup that was in the bag. You can see the uh, both nozzles going out the same direction on this particular unit here. The vacuum was in one side, the uh, fluid was going out the other side. 1956 uh, motor changed somewhat into the the early 56s may have had a 55 motor but uh, most of the 56s had uh, this particular 5047924 and if you look down here the shaft comes through and there's a little keeper ring on it um, the cable still come in here to turn things on and off it also had a uh, little bracket here to kind of help mount it with the wire uh, the ground wire coming out of the case there 1957 the foot pump changed a little bit 
you got two little screw holes up here. I don't know whether they was having problems keeping the cable tight, but they added a second uh, screw up there to kind of help support the cable. You can see it still had the uh, rubber foot pad on it mounted clear over in the corner. In 1957, we changed from the bag. We went to a plastic off-white jar with a red lid mounted on the driver's side. Uh, the lid had coordinator washer across the top. It had the valve with both fittings running in the same direction, a fill lid on this side, and a big flat bar across the bottom. The bottom side had just had a uh, hose coming down with a fluted type uh, plastic piece with a screen on the bottom. 57, we started out with a uh, part number of 5047984. Um, all the uh, wiper motors up to this unit uh, did not really what they call have a slow park. They uh, parked at the same speed as what they were wiping at where later in 57, they went to a 5047991. And this particular unit had a slow park, which was basically the only difference between this one and the other one in 57. When it come down to park it, it slowed itself down toward the bottom part of the park system. And you'll also notice here, they've done away with a little keeper ring around the shaft coming out. This is just 57 mounted. You can see the foot pump and the uh, both knob cables coming out here to turn the pump on or the motor on, excuse me. 1958, we went to a uh, different lid. We uh, went back away from the foot pump. We went back to a push button on the dash. These particular valve up here did all the uh, transition from the uh, vacuum coming from the uh, switch. Uh, you got a vacuum line coming from a spare tank, which we will get into them here in a little bit that was mounted down in different spots in different years and different uh, carburetor fuel injected figurations. They were in different spots. The control circuit come in here, um, the water, or the fluid went out and also uh, you had a con uh, circuit down here. I'll, I got a better picture of this here on my next slide, but uh, it had a coordinator on the top, the fill plug and washer on the bottom. There you can see the uh, different, the controls. One uh, went to a uh, actuator actually on the motor which was vacuum controlled to turn the motor on and off rather than a cable. Um, the water went out to the uh, nozzle so the vacuum come, like I said, from a uh, extra vacuum can that was mounted somewhere in the car. We'll get into that here in a little bit. Here's the valve that's on top of them. Um, it's quite complex inside, which I will show you here in a little bit. Um, they were used from 58 to 62 on Corvettes. If you see some of the other particular models that used the Trico system, they had different valving on top. Um, it used the basically the same pump as what I showed you earlier in the uh, uh, jars. Mounted on the bottom side of the, of the lid. <clears throat> The valve, um, if you ever want to try and rebuild one of these, my advice is uh, take a lot of pictures when you take this thing apart. Uh, it don't take much of putting uh, one piece back in the wrong spot for it don't work. And if you uh, do try and rebuild them, my first advice is when you put it back together, use these screws because they are riveted together. If you put the screws in, you can take them back apart and fix your mistakes. Uh, I'm speaking from experience on this one. 
uh, where if you put the screws in, you can take it apart. I think we only had to take this one apart twice to get it to work right, which I felt was pretty good considering all the uh, pieces in there. And like I say, take a lot of pictures if you want to do this. It, it can be done. We did it. Uh, not that difficult if I can do it. Um, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to show you the inside workings of one of these. And right here is the rivets that go together. Once you get it working right, pull the screws out one at a time and put your rivets in and uh, mash them over. Uh, works pretty good that way. 1958 through early 1962, we used uh, electric motor 5044266. Um, basically, uh, was pretty much the same through them years toward 62 where there was some changes on the inside uh, switching mechanism in here which I'll show you a little bit that inside here in a little bit. Uh, the These particular ones uh, 58 through 61 you slotted screws here you'll find in 62 they went to a Phillips screw the part number is embossed or stamped in this cover that covers the uh, control mechanism inside the motor. This is the actuator that uh, the vacuum from the uh, top valve on the uh, lids comes to this to turn it on, or also you've got the cable from the uh, um, push button or the button on the dash to uh, control the motor turning on. Here's the inside of one of them motors. Uh, you can see the this little tab sticks up and the plastic piece that slides back and forth turns it, pushes it against the uh, contacts to turn this thing on and off. In 59, we uh, changed the top of the tank a little bit. We went back to a uh, bar across the bottom. Still had the coordinator up here and it did not have any of the uh, hose hookups listed here. In uh, 58 and 59, they used uh, a dry cycle. It was uh, more of a uh, paper type thing that was mounted over this screw. This particular label usually did not come into uh, play until 1960 when they glued them on the lids. Uh, I've got a little more on that here in a little bit. In 1960, you can see the bar went away. There's just a trico. Uh, emblem down there, logo from the company. Still had the coordinator washer, the fill lid. No uh, information on any of the hose hookups on this one. The bracket that mounted the uh, jar to the uh, inner fenders was like this. 1961. You see the coordinators up here and the washers down here, and here is the dry life, uh, dry cycle label glued to the lid. Still no labeling on any of the uh, hose hookups on this. Nineteen sixty one, the uh, windshield washers became standard equipment, and you'll see here on this one that we still have the slotted screws on this. A coordinator, this hose goes down to the va uh, valve on top of the uh, washer reservoir lid. This one comes from the uh, button inside on the dash, and some of them have uh, date stampings on them. Here's the two uh, different uh, dry cycle labels. Uh, this is one that's used on 58s, 59s, which just hooked over the screw. In 60, they usually started to glue them onto the lids. In very late 62, you might have a bright colored blue lid. Most of them was blue gray up to this point or a grayish color. The extra reservoir vacuum tanks. Uh, this is where I kind of got into a uh, little, I'm not quite sure on some things because the AIM says that uh, the uh, 
343 tank was used on fuel injection units and two four barrel units, which most carbureted cars did not use this particular system. The basically the only difference in these tanks is the uh, direction of the uh, hookups from the hoses. Other than in 62, they uh, actually welded the studs to the bracket rather than put a bolt through to a uh, bar on the other side of the uh, fender well. But as you can see, this one's coming out kind of on an angle with the mounting brackets. It's used on carbureted cars mostly. Um, 1961 fuel cars had the uh, hookups coming off a different direction and then you had the ones with the studs in them this particular tank is a fuel injected car it's mounted on the passenger side above the battery with the washer kind of in front of the battery and there was a heat shield on the fuel injected cars. So, and the, the AIM says the two fours was mounted the same way, but I I can't really say, I've seen some mounted on the other side too. So I'm not sure, uh, I'm hoping Dave Heitzman's on here and can maybe give me a little bit of guidance on that. How many he's seen where the two fours are mounted on that side rather than a carbureted side. This is a carbureted car mounted on the uh, driver's side. You can see the tank down below the uh, washer unit itself. Um, the coordinators uh, had different numbers for the different years and different lettering through the years. Uh, some of them did not have this patent stuff up here. Most of them had the number down here, and there is a number embossed on the side over here. I got a better picture of that here in a couple slides. Um, in 62, you see they went to Phillips to anchor this and to anchor the screws. This particular hole is an exhaust valve to get the vacuum out from the uh, particular from the valving from the uh, washer tank. Uh, you notice it still has the flush tap, and unlike the 56s where they had the uh, retainer ring on them. Here's a little better picture of the lettering on them. Um, the number right here changes from 23s to 14s to 4s, I believe. There may be a couple other numbers down here also. Uh, the years it's in the uh, judging manual. This shows a little better of the emboss on the side of the coordinator right here, kind of stands out. You can see the lettering here pretty good in this one. And that's pretty much it for the C1s. Uh, Dave Heisman, are you on here by any chance? Can you give me any help on the 2-4 type uh, setups? Hey, Mike, I looked through the list. Dave is not on, and if I remember right, he and Marilyn emailed me about a week ago so they wouldn't be able to make it. Okay, all right. Um, and just a reminder for anyone else who uh, Mike uh, calls out uh, for some input, you're muted right now, so you'll need to go to the top of the GoToMeeting toolbar. You'll see a, a circle that's red with a microphone symbol. You'll need to click that to turn it green to be able to talk. Uh, but again, that's only if Mike uh, calls on you. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if anybody else has got anything they can add to this on the C1s or not, but uh, if you can speak up, are any questions on it? I haven't seen any chat questions. Um, we'll, get, we'll just give a couple seconds here for somebody to unmute themselves if they did have a, a specific question. Hey, Mike, this is Wes. Are, are, are most of these washer years, are these um, what I'll call cross-pollinated with other GM products and models, or is it exclusively just for Corvette? Oh, 
I'm not real sure on that. I know a lot of this stuff was just a Corvette. I'm not sure how the uh, uh, passenger cars was uh, put together for sure. Be truthful with you. I guess I never paid that much attention to the passenger cars. Yeah, I'm just wondering if, you know, um, a 57 Corvette washer system is the same as a 57 Chevy washer system. I, and to your point, I've never really done that, but I know they they cross-pollinated a lot of models. Is there anybody out there that can add anything to that? I guess I'll have to do some more research on that. Yeah, same here. I'll, I'll follow up on that. Okay, if no more questions or no questions, we'll move on to C2 stuff. Real, real quick, Mike, if for some reason someone cannot unmute themselves, just send me a message in the chat box and I could uh, manually unmute you if you have a question. Okay. All right, we'll move on here to C2 stuff. Uh, C2, the bracket is mounted on the driver's side inner fender. They went to a jar and the uh, washer pump is actually on the windshield wiper motor. Um, the bracket, um, I kind of got some questions on this. There's two different brackets, uh, numbers listed in the AIM and the uh, 6364 is a two or a 3822543 and 6567 it's a 3864370. The only difference I can find in them is the finish. Um, I got uh, that, let me get to my picture here. Uh, here's basically a 65 and here's a 63. And pretty much they both look identical here. If you look at uh, the bracket number in the AIM, is uh, different on the 63 to 65. And if you notice down at the bottom, I've got this highlighted right here. It says, must be coated with a suitable oil to prevent rust during shipment and storage. And that's the only difference I can find between the two brackets. And up here, it's, it's got a part number listed for the solvent or an option, uh, coating on them. Other than that, I cannot find any difference between the two brackets. The jars were kind of an off-white. Uh, some of the reproduction, the neck is a little different. Uh, they had markings on the front for uh, uh, volume of it in there. The lids, caps for the jars were smooth with a uh, tab sticking out to pull them off, uh, had a hose barb off to the side. Uh, the, ho the hose had ribs going to the uh, washer pump uh, mounted on the uh, washer wiper motor. As you can see in this picture, the uh, up to 72, I believe it is, these uh, support or extra ribs here stop short of coming clear back to the cap. So if you've got a C2 or an early C3, you should have a void right here from the uh, reinforcement part. Uh, it shouldn't go clear back to the cap. That is a uh, reproduction cap if it goes clear back. On the bottom of the of the uh, hose in the uh, pickup tank is a uh, plastic suction thing with a brass screen in it. The uh, outport, output ports for the uh, going to the wiper uh, or the washer nozzles is on the backside toward the firewall. The uh, hose from the tank comes into the center. Um, you can see on this one that somebody's put this uh, pump on upside down. It's uh, got the uh, output ports on the top rather than the back side. In uh, 63, there was just a single piece here 
for the uh, end of the pump, where in later years it was a two piece. Um, this is a 63 pump part. This is a 64 and later, where it has the two pieces. And if you see a black one, it's definitely a reproduction. The washer nozzles have a little brass insert that you could adjust to hit the window in the right spot. Sixty-three through sixty-six uh, air conditioned cars and 396 cars had the bag rather than the bottle. Um, I believe these mounted kind of back in the fender well. Um, in 67, the bag changed. This, this end down here, you'll see it's a little different. Uh, it's an off-white canvas cloth. mounted on the driver's side inner fender with uh, this little bracket across there. This is apt to be a 65 396 car. The uh, pump in 63 and 64, this particular one's a, a 63 because you can tell by the uh, pump nozzle or the pump end down here. They have, should have a 15 or a 16 stamped somewhere on the round part of the uh, motor over in this area. The motor number is a 5044518. It is stamped on the end. The back side of it will mounts to the firewall. There's the numbers and uh, you can want to check the rivets on the end of them because a lot of rebuilders use the wrong style rivets when they put them back together. Um, 63, there was two different styles of mount. This particular part right in here was open in the, uh, uh, I'm not sure early or late, but I think all the later cars was closed like that. But here you can see a uh, one with the open area up in here. I'm not sure whether they had problems with it breaking and the reason they put the support across the top or what exactly it was, the reasoning behind it. 65 through 67 went to a 5044602 motor. Um, you can see down in this area, and they had a 13 or a 14 stamped on these particular motors. Sixty-seven bag, you'll see, is a longer area here, a little different than the uh, 63 through 66 bags for the uh, air-conditioned cars. Backside kind of a off color, dark gray cloth, should not be a vinyl. Uh, that's it in the mid years. Uh, is there any questions or anybody got any comments on anything through the mid year stuff? Just a reminder to unmute yourself, click on the red circle with the microphone symbol and it should turn green. Uh, if you can't unmute, you can type your question in the chat box. Can Can you go back to the uh, 65 through 67 motor? And was, I have a four and a quarter. There was no bag that I'm aware of in a four and a quarter for reservoir. No. The bags were just used on air-conditioned cars. Okay. 
the bottle, the jar, like what I showed at the first part was uh, was used on the, most of the cars. Just the bag was used on the air conditioned cars or the 65 396 cars. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay. Or we move on. Yeah, we had one question. He asked, um, Rick asked if you could show. Show us the reverse mounting picture again and elaborate. I think you yeah, have a photo that you mounted it backwards, if I remember right, but the hoses were not in the correct orientation. Oh. This one? There it is. Yeah. Yep. These should be along the back side, like right here. Is that you what want they to wanted? Use your, to... um, your red pointer or your highlighter, just so we know exactly yeah. what you're pointing at. The hoses should be along the back side of the firewall here. Where this one, they're on the top, they're clocked wrong, they should be back here. So it's basically 90 degrees off, correct? Correct. Yeah, they should be clocked toward the toward the firewall side. Right. Tom had asked what division made C2 motors. What division made them? They were Delco appliance in Rochester, uh, New York's where they were made. That's all the questions I see. You probably want to move on. Okay. Go into the uh, early sharks. Instead of the uh, white or off-white, milky colored jar they went to a black jar in uh, 68 69 um, used on non-air conditioned cars uh, they used a bag on the air conditioned cars mounted uh, on the passenger side inner fender down uh, low on the inner fender on the passenger side uh, air conditioned cars used a bag this is a 68 bag which it varies a little bit through the years. The 68 bag backside was a dark gray, black canvas textured plastic. Its neck was about an inch to about an inch and a half tall. Uh, you'll see some variations in the necks here in the next few pictures of the later cars. Um, 68 uh, pump and, and wiper motor. Um, was a 5044683 in 68. Uh, you'll find later on in 69, they started putting a silver tag down here with a number on them. Uh, 68, they still stamped them on the ends, from what I understand. Uh, maybe Mr. Bossman can straighten me out if I'm wrong on this with the end here. Uh, the 68 washer nozzles was uh, mounted on the cowl. Uh, to spray up on the windshield. Uh, there's the mounting position down in the fender well in a 69. 69 pump, you can see they put the uh, silver tag down here with a number on it. Also in 69, we went to the uh, headlight washers, which had an extra valve up here for that. Um, kind of a unique motor in 69. Um, Sixty-nine. We moved the uh, washer nozzles onto the wiper arm themselves, <clears throat> rather than mounting them on the cowl. Also, sixty-nine. We had the headlight washers. In sixty-nine, the bottom one was mounted on the flat area. The top one was on the uh, vertical area up here, squirting just on the low beam headlight. In 1970, we went to a five-port pump. 
the uh, part number was a 5044758. As you can see, they still got that silver tag is down on the motor with the part number and a date code on it. This one is mounted on a 1970. Uh, you can see you've got two lines going out for the windshield washer, two lines going out for the headlight washers, and an intake coming in the center from the jar. In 1970, we went from uh, the little bracket that slides in to hold the jar to a permanently mounted one on the wall on the uh, fender well, which was bolted to it. Here's the AIM for the headlight washers. You can see the hose is running up, going to the top and bottom washer. Mid 70s, 71, the uh, washer location changed to the back side. Uh, in 1971, after serial number range 2400 of uh, the windshield washer holes was in the uh, headlight uh, bezel up here, uh, up to around serial number 13,000, but there was no washers up in this area. Um, they discontinued them at that point in time. This is a nozzle for the headlight washers. When they discontinued the headlight washers in 71, they put a hose from the two nozzles on the uh, washer pump to each other. Um, to block them off. The other two nozzles went up to the windshield still. And when they, they no longer had the uh, windshield or the uh, headlight washers, they cut the hoses off somewhere on the fender well here and in front of the uh, radiator support. Uh, but the hoses were still in there till around serial number 19.5. If I'm wrong on that, I'm hoping Mr. Bossman will chime in here at the end and get me straightened out. There's a motor tag, kind of hard to see them on these. They're buried down in the, uh, behind the motor on the firewall. 69 to 72, the bag changed a little bit. Uh, the neck also changed heights. You can see there was a, anywhere from a, a half inch to a three and a half inch uh, neck that stuck out here. They were mounted down in the driver's side back toward the firewall. And this is the jar you can see where it bolts to the bracket rather than slides in the brackets as earlier ones did extension nozzle started in 71 make it easier to uh, fill because they were down in such a low area in the uh, fender well and with them being bolted up uh, you couldn't pull the uh, plastic jug out to fill it like you could in uh, 69 There's one mounted down in there. You can kind of see why they uh, needed to put the extension on. It's very hard to get any fluid down in there without spilling it all over. Nineteen seventy two, the reinforcement around the lip went clear back. Before that, you should still have the openings. So if you see a cap on an earlier car that comes clear back, you know it's a uh, reproduction part. Also, the neck had a uh, part number embossed on it. Uh, it's usually on the back side, kind of hard to see, but you can feel it. This is 
just another picture, the 7374 neck was a little different than the uh, 7172 neck. There was a different part number. Nineteen seventy four pump five oh four four eight one one was the last pump mounted on the windshield wiper motor. After seventy four, we went to the electric pump on the bottom of the tank. Um, there's the tag. You can see the uh, part number up here. The date code is a Jillian date. The year right here. I believe this may be a shift or something, I'm not sure on what that particular numbers are. Um, 74, you can see the AIM shows the pump is still on the motor here. Gary Bosselman, can you add anything to this what so far here, or you got anything you'd like to add? I unmuted Gary, so he should be able to click on his audio and turn it green. I, uh, I don't, I have not heard anything I disagree with. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to add, Gary? Uh, nope. Anything okay. you can add? <laughs> okay. Thank you. We'll move on. 75, you can see the pump left the, uh, washer or wiper motor and it's an electric pump underneath the tank. Seventy five the cap changed a little bit. We got uh, lettering on the on top of the cap here, made in the USA, embossed on the cap. Bottom side, you've got uh, a part number and uh, I think it's a J A D A and there, the number down here I've seen vary from six to eight on different ones. You can see the reinforcement still goes clear back to the cap. Picture of the pump mounted on the bottom of the tank, the extension it goes up so you can fill it. A uh, wiper motor number 5044814 was used on uh, 75, 76, I believe. Lost my note. But anyway, uh, they started uh, when they did away with the uh, pump on there, that, and they, the way this was configured up here changed a little bit. Uh, there's still got the uh, the tag with the part number and the Jillian date here. The cover was screwed on. The 75 manual says, or 75, 76, 77 manual says 75 was screwed on and 76 was held on by tabs. But I've looked at three or four 76s and they all was screwed on with these bolts. There's one down here one here and one here. So I'm not sure if the tabs ever held them on or hopefully uh, Brian can uh, shed some light on this here at the end. In 78, you can see the pump is still mounted down underneath the tank. The tank is a little different configured. There's an 80 to 82 tank. You can see it's a lot different configuration the way it mounts down in there. It does have numbers on it. The extension tube coming up has a uh, manufacturer's logo and a part number on it. little different angle of the whole extension tube. <clears throat> Picture of 
picture of the motor and the pump of the later ones. You can see the coloring on this is a little different than the earlier ones. I'm not sure when this changed over. And you can see how they're buried, so it's kind of hard to get down in and uh, actually see any uh, any numbers or anything on these. Yeah, I am listing shows the motor jar assembly and extension numbers. Brian Pierce, can you add anything to that or what did I mess up there? I unmuted Brian. Yeah, Nothing to add. How about you, Rick Coker? You got anything you can add to that? Rick, you're unmuted if you want to say anything. The clips, I have, I cannot recall ever seeing one with the clips. Everything I've ever seen had the screws, and Brian had to step away. Okay. The the clips, where are you talking now? The clips on that uh windshield washer motor or windshield the motor cover. Oh the that there. One. Yep. You've never seen what now? The... I don't believe I've ever seen one with a clips. If I have, I don't remember it. I definitely remember the one with the three bolts. Okay, most of them have these bolts that hold the uh, cover on. From what yep. I from what I've read, yeah. Other than that, it looks real good, Mike. Hey, Mike okay. Terry, and Terry sent a chat message to say that in '68 and '69, GM went from white to black washer fluid holders. You would not notice it in the holes of the side louvers. I'm not quite sure what you meant that you would not notice. Do you understand that comment, Mike? Yeah, you can kind of see the tank through the louvers. Uh, but uh, in, yeah, in 68, 69, they were black tanks that, that uh, the fluid was in. Later on, they were went back to the off milk white tanks, um, which I'm not sure, yeah, through the through the side louvers, I'm not sure how much you could see or whether, it, how much it got, uh, if it got any blackout down there. I don't think the tank was in there to blackout. Uh, period. Well, I do know some of the brackets or most of the brackets were. And, and Pat added a chat message saying he has a 76 and it has the bolts. Most of, most of them I've seen have the bolts. I, ha I haven't really found any with the clips that I can go, you know, actually say I've seen the clips. So I know they're you know revising what? the 75, 76, 77 manual right now. And uh, I, I hope they get a lot of this straightened out because I know there was a lot of errors in that manual. Uh, any comments on that, Rick? Or uh... Uh, He's working on the manual right now. It's not the best one out there to go by anything that's in it. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, no more questions or any comments or anything, we'll move on to the C4s then. One quick question for me, Mike. Um, you mentioned in, in earlier C3s they had the um, washer, the washers for the headlights, but then did away with them. Was that a cost issue, or is it just it was not functional and they decided to get rid of it? Um, I I don't think they really worked that great. Uh, Gary Bosselman, can you add anything to that? I think they had issues with them um, continuing to work and um it was most certainly a cost issue probably it's when you look at the hoses and the nozzles and um all of those kinds of things um it, it probably added quite a bit of cost and probably had very little use um most cars today when you try and test them they don't work because they're full of calcium and um just takes a while to get them cleaned out and working. Um, 
the only comment that I might make if, if you go back to the C3 washer nozzle, um, there's a small brass ball in the middle of that nozzle. Um, and those get plugged up with um, uh, road dirt and, you know, I'm not sure what a, you know, I call it calcium and it, and it might be something else. There you go. Um, but that, but that nozzle is, is an adjustable ball that if you take a, I don't know if it's a number 41 or a 42 drill, you can um, uh, actually move that ball around to point it towards the center of the headlights. And the C2 washer nozzles use the same setup to where you could move the balls to point the washers to more specific spots on the windshields. And if you actually look at that nozzle where the fluid comes in, you'll um, through, through that all the way up, um, those had the tendency to plug up with um, calcium from water, people running straight water in them and uh, never did work very well. So uh, that's all, that's really all I'll have, you know, I have to say. And Mike, one more comment um, that was added, then we can move on. Uh, Tom had asked um, for the for the production run shortly after they got rid of the headlight washers, where they just cut the hoses in the engine compartment. I think you just passed that slide. Were there issues with that squirting into the engine, or was it it was it actually disconnected from the um, reservoir itself as well? They were disconnected from the pump. It was uh, the pump had just had a crossover pipe or a hose that was fastened from one to the other to a, um, right here, it fastened from the, the two headlight washer nozzles. So they just pump back and forth between each other. And, and then they cut them off inside on the uh, inner fender well. Uh, and then on the uh, front side of the uh, uh, radiator uh, support from what I understand. Okay, thanks. I think we can move on. We got a question for Gary Bosselman there. Uh, yeah, the part number tags were there more than one, was there more than one part number for 72? Um, I can't answer that for sure. Um, not that I'm aware of, but I'd have to do some digging on that. Um, the part numbers on the bottom of the motors are pretty hard to read on, on these cars with the ignition shielding and all the hoses and, um, tubes that run in that area. And you can get to them with a mirror and look at them. But, um, um, for the most part, I, I judge mechanical quite often and we don't spend that much time looking at the part numbers. So. Um, and I know they're not in the judging manual either. Okay, I hope that cleared up his question. Okay. Hey, uh, <clears throat> those cutoff hoses, is that something that is judged normally? Do we actually look for those cutoff, cutoff hoses? Um, mid to late 71s, yeah, we'll look for that. Um, the reproduction hose sets won't come with those, but um, the reproduction hoses are, are a thicker wall. They're a larger diameter. Um, there's a lot of ways you can tell the reproduction hoses. So, um, you know, we will normally make a deduction for the reproduction hoses and just not mention that the cutoff hoses aren't there. Okay, any other questions? If not, we'll move on to the C4s then. Okay, C4, 
84 through 91 had a tank uh, configured something like this. It was mounted in the uh, passenger side lower fender and about the only thing you can see on these, you cannot see these part numbers or anything or there is a date code on them, but you cannot really get down in to see them. Um, there's a better picture of the date code. Um, the pump was mounted on the bottom of these particular units. And that's about all you can see right there of this washer fluid. It's buried down in the fender well. It's very hard to see. The caps, uh, 84 to 86, was configured like this with the Delco products, Dayton, Ohio, and windshield washer only, and made in the USA. They, the caps changed through the years here. Bottom side, you can see the reinforcement still goes clear back, a little vent hole in the top. Wiper motor on an 86, back along the dash. Firewall area back in here. Um, I got to apologize for the fuzziness on this one. I screwed up on my camera, I guess, but uh, this is an 87 to 91 cap. You can see the lettering is a lot different than it was on the earlier caps. The 92 to 96 jar, you can see changed a little bit. The pump was mounted a lot different than it was on the earlier ones. Here's the cap for the uh, 92s to 2000s, and the lettering is in blue. You can see the windshield with the little washer emblem on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. They added a uh, fill screen. I don't know if they were having a lot of problems with uh, debris getting in the the tanks and plugging the pumps up or why they added this. I can't believe that uh, there wasn't a good reason for them to add it in there. I mean, that's a probably a pretty good little cost uh, addition. And you'll notice the uh, support added a little extra support underneath the, the uh, lift tab on the uh, cover there. 97 to 2000, the tanks like this along the uh, upper fender. Um, the pump was mounted underneath the bottom side. It had a level sensor in the front side of it. And the fill cap changed to uh, this particular uh, diagram. And that's about all I've got. Um, if uh, anybody's got any comments or anything they can add, uh, there's my information. I appreciate any information I can get on it. Uh, I hope everybody picked up a little bit of something out of this uh, presentation today. I know I sure did doing it. Uh, things you find when you start digging into stuff. I still got questions on some of the stuff. So uh, uh, that's about all I've got. Is there any questions? Hey, Mike, this is Wes. Is there any particular year part that you're looking for more information so when we're out scouting around that we could take a picture and forward to you? Uh, not really any one particular thing. Uh, just, you know, if you've got some information or know I said something wrong or if you've got more information I can you know, add to this, uh, I appreciate anything anybody can, you know, send me. I hope everybody enjoyed the presentation. And uh, like I said, I learned a lot doing it. Uh, some of the, I still got some questions I need to answer. Somewhere down the line, I will find my answers, I guess. But uh, it, it ended up more than what I thought when I first started doing it. Well, on, on behalf of uh, everybody that's on the call, Mike and Nick, we really want to thank you for putting this together. Um, a fantastic job and the technical breadth and detail that you go through is um,
fantastic and uh, benefits the entire organization. So Nick, really well done, really uh, a great job. Go-to meeting, I think it's gonna be our go-to um, if we do this in the future. But again, thanks to Mike, this is his second one. He's been invaluable. Um, he is so uh, gracious in his uh, sharing of his knowledge. And um, uh, if you guys don't know, we, we actually had, we got a call from a guy from Boston that wanted to look at a car at Mershon's and Mike was willing to give his time to actually go down and sh uh, review the car with the gentleman. So uh, he, he gives back to the community more than anybody I, I ever know. So thank you again, Mike. Um, at this time, we'll uh, open it up for a lot, one last chance for questions or comments. Um, and if that's if there are none, we will sign off. So uh, any questions or comments from the group? Tom okay. Dingman asked, what is dry cycle testing? Okay, on, on them particular units, uh, uh, let me see if I can get this right now. I know I'm going to screw it up. Uh, it's the adjustment time. It's how to adjust the time that it squirts uh, when it's on and off on the on the them particular containers in the 58 through 62s. You can adjust them without actually making them work. There's a procedure you go through, uh, turn the screw in, back it out, and so forth that supposedly times it correctly. I, I don't know if that answered your question, but it, it's a, it's a, an adjustment for the uh, time it squirts and the time it's off, basically. And asked why were bags used as reservoirs for AC cars? Uh, basically, because a lot of the uh, uh, reservoirs were hard, solid plastic on the passenger side, and that's where the AC units for the inside of the car was mounted. There was not room for a plastic jug. So they had to basically find a place and the driver's side, about all they could fit in there was a bag. So that's why they went to the bag on them as, as basically for uh, the reason that there was not room for the for plastic jug and, and they had to change sides because everything was full because of the air conditioning stuff. Uh, I hope that answered your question. I don't see any other uh, comments or questions, so I think uh, oh, Rick has one more. Regarding hose diameters. And Rick, oh, I I don't have that right in front of me. I'd have to do some digging. If you uh, send me an email, I can get back with you. By no. Uh, the thickness of the hoses uh, on some of the reproduction stuff is a lot different than uh, than what the original hose diameter was. Um, but yeah, I'll have to do some uh, checking. I don't really have that right in front of me right now. I'm sorry about that. If you if you give me an email, Rick, I'll uh, I'll I'll do some digging and I'll let you know. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, with that, I'm going to end the recording and uh, close out. So we appreciate everybody joining. And uh, give us uh, maybe within the next uh, week or so, we'll assign judging points. Thank you a lot, job, Mike. Mike. Great job, Mike, as always. Thank you, everyone, for joining the call. Um, at this time, we'll end the call. Thank you. All right.